In 2017, Netflix released the American feature film adaptation of the Japanese manga Death Note. The film was welcomed by critics with very mixed opinion, with some critics praising the acting, camp, and direction, and others deriding it as cheap, unfaithful to the original, and guilty of whitewashing. A couple months back, I wrote a big defense of the movie for Wabam Entertainment that garnered nearly 700 reads from a divided fandom. Many disagreed with me passionately. Others found sense in what I was saying, noting the undeniable fact that film is a subjective medium. So here we are in September, and last month The Hollywood Reporter dropped the news that Netflix is directing a sequel written by Greg Russo. Once again, people were divided. Even I was split in my opinion. I had already made peace with the first film's ambiguous ending, and I thought a sequel's chances were virtually non-existent. But stranger things have happened. And now I know a sequel is happening, and I'm excited and eager to see what they do with it. With all the division among fans, I decided to invite some friends over to discuss the sequel and hear their thoughts on the first film. I'm hoping we can find some common ground and bring some clarity to a heightened fandom. Kicking things off with an introduction, of course, I am your chief story baker, Landon Bell, and joining me is Katie Gilstrap and Isaac Wolf of Wabam Entertainment. Welcome to the roundtable, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. It is great to have you guys. How are you doing this evening? Pretty good. Pretty good. Evening. It's morning, and yeah, pretty good. It certainly is morning over there in Sweden, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. well tell you what so um for you know my viewers here on story bake a lot of them maybe haven't read wabam uh, so i will just kind of do a recap of what happened with that piece so this was back in june back in june i wrote this big defense of netflix's death note and really what it boiled down to was i took issue with the fandom for um driving adam wingard the director away from social media, away from the public spotlight. They tried to blame him for whitewashing the movie, even though he um, intentionally designed the movie to fit into the American mold. And he had um, Lakeith Stanfield, who played L in the movie. He was coming out and he was defending Wingard's decisions. Um, people didn't care. Uh, and so they kept the heat. They kept the heat. And so now you don't hear anything from Wingard, even though he's fixing to direct Godzilla versus King Kong. So it was, a, it was kind of a mess. And it's not that the Death Note movie was, you know, anything majorly different from most movies out there. It's a movie. It's got flawed parts. It's got parts that are really good. Um, it's got parts that, you know, people have mixed opinions about it's a movie in other words and so i happen to really like it how about you guys where do you guys rank with the movie um first of all i'm extremely sorry for the squeaking in the background that is my two adorable little puppies but they don't know how to behave very well um i enjoyed the movie it was very nice um uh, I, I did watch the anime that the movie was based on, and honestly, I I didn't think the anime differed too much in perspective. Um, definitely the different cultures stood out, um, but I did not. Would you? I did not see that big of difference between the two movies besides the culture. Um. Well. If I would uh, tell you right now what I feel, being uh, tons of uh, bleak, bleeping in, uh, sounds right now, I have uh, some positives about it, but that's going on later. I started to say, but overall, you were more negative side with the film. Certainly. All right. Um, well, I mean, I guess we could actually start with the things that we disliked in it because. You know, we can get the negativity out of the way, move on to the more positive. 
Um, so, like, what were the things that you guys did not like in this movie? First movie. How many hours do you want to, this pod to be? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll minimize it a little bit here. So, let's keep it to, like, a list of five to ten things. I can uh, t- give it to rather briefly then. Uh, as someone that's a big fan of the manga, I am I'm a big anime manga guy in general, and uh, I'm pr- I'm pretty much the manga and anime guy in uh, on both them. I love it. I have a, a problem with the ending, but I, lo- I love the manga and anime. Anyway, I get what uh, uh, Adam was trying to. Uh, was trying to uh, trying to do. I get. Uh, I, I have no problem with the ca- casting. I think you can. In, I, I think you can cast uh, anyone at life as long as it's, the characters is written and acted well. I no. I have no. Pr- I'm one of those that think agrees with you. Even though I uh, on the part about it's just fudged up. That that they uh, force him out of social media and all that. That's I I agree with you. But I did. It's just when I watched that movie, it just felt so fundamentally wrong when I watched it. It just it, it just felt like it gave, it gave me the sense of a fan film, so to speak, and not in a good way. I've seen fan films that feels. More death note, so to speak. I give him kudos for, because of what he tried to, to do, but it just didn't work. It didn't feel like feel like a death note. Although, if death, if this was an original movie, I might have had a different opinion on this. I can admit that. Katie, how about you? So I really. And this might be weird, but I, I really and truly my only issue with the movie was the casting choice with um, the main character, uh, Nate Wolf. I, I did not like that casting. I thought the casting could have gone better. Um, that I agree with. I, I just don't think he portrayed the, the anime as well as it could have gone. Um... That that was really my only that was my biggest issue. The story lagged in some certain parts, but I mean the, I can get around that. But I, yeah, the 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 casting choice of the main character was not my favorite part. As for myself, um, for the most part, I. I've come to terms with the flaws of the film because I think if you truly love something, you will love its flaws as well. Um, And that goes for everything in life. But with the movie, I originally took issue with how it doesn't really commit to the camp. So it tries to be campy in places. And that's cool because, let's face it, there are certain things in anime that you can get away with in anime and manga. But when you bring it to America, it is off kilter so for example there's the whole scene where l is jumping around in his apartment eating candy normal adult people don't do this but he does and so the movie kind of plays it up as campy but it doesn't really commit to the camp it it tries it a little bit and then it's like "Eh, we're gonna go for more serious now and i think if the movie had been a little more campy it could have defined itself a little bit better with people who were quick to criticize it uh, because obviously it's not it's not trying to be a 100 percent reflective version of the original it's trying to do something new um and i do applaud it for taking those risks but you know i think if it had committed to the camp a little bit more it would have been a little bit better of a movie um and and the casting of nat wolf i haven't seen the anime so i can't actually you know, do a perfect comparison. But from what I do know, um, if I had seen the anime first, I probably would have been a little bit disappointed by that casting choice. Um, other than that, though, other than those two things, 
Um, overall, I don't have any major problems with it. Yeah, I would agree with you, Landon. Um, and I might get a lot of heat for this, but it, the the direction to take it in an American style, it didn't bug me. I mean, changes in storylines happen all the time, and we need to like move along. Nece- that that's a bad phrasing. Um. Ugh, okay, never mind. Just cut that. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> The words are That's okay. lost. Let me just say this. I get. Uh, I am fully aware that uh, you can't uh, always uh, control copy something from uh, that is anime from uh, to live action, especially when it it's so cultural difference uh, between Japan and the West. I get that. Heck, even. Comics doesn't really work. Uh, American comics, DC, Marvel, you can't really control copy uh, comics from the from the movies. There are changes to be made. And what I mean, uh, but but my uh, biggest issue. I just want to clarify this. I uh, I respect and I uh, I understand why they changed that, but I, I think they could have done a it, it, it lacked it lacked the identity that I saw the mission you uh, I think you can adapt it but still have the identity of the uh, death note and that's what I was lacking uh, with as a missing with the movie I I uh, don't know how to put it because yeah let's end off with that I do get what you're saying though um and I think cultural identity of stories is, is a big factor. Um, there have been many arguments before about whether the West should even try to adapt anime and manga. Um, I'm personally of the opinion that they should because I like when other cultures try to adapt stories. So it's like in India, they just made a Bollywood version of Rambo a few years ago. I still haven't had a chance to see it, but I really want to uh, because you know it's one of those things where... What is Rambo like if you adapt it to Indian culture? I don't know, but it sounds cool to me. So I want to see. I, I'm totally with you. Heck, the, the Edge of Tomorrow or Live, Live Die Repeat, as uh, it's called, I don't know what heck, it's based on a light novel called uh, All You Need Is Kill, a.k.a. a manga. So it works. I just, it, it, the formula in the Death Note movie just didn't work for me. Although I don't think every anime manga uh, w- uh, can work for an American audience, see the live action One Piece TV show that's about to happen, but that's another story. <laughs> that is another entirely different episode. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we covered the stuff we disliked. Let's talk about the things we actually did like in this movie. Um, I'm hoping this is a little bit longer a segment. So let's go over some things you guys liked. And I guess, uh, Katie, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, So, like I said before, I definitely enjoyed the movie. Um, It's definitely... I didn't didn't see as much issue between the story and the story of the movie and the story of the anime as much as some other critics did. Um, I, I definitely liked the transition between American culture... And the Japanese culture, I I think in today's society, it's important to see different stories between different cultures because it allows the story to progress and not just be in one culture where it's understood complicitly or implicitly, I think is, yeah, implicitly understood. But like transitioning to different cultures, it allows the story to be broader and more accepting and it shows a higher variety. And so I really did enjoy seeing Death Note transition to American culture. Um, I, I thought it still lined up fairly decently with the anime. It kept the main parts of the anime to a T. Um, and obviously, like, there is some cultural di- differentiation 
but I still, I, I liked it and I enjoyed it. <laughs> Words are hard, I'm sorry. It tastes like, uh, taste is different from everybody, so it's awesome if you li uh, like or love it. Yeah. Every Isaac, were there any aspects of it that you did like? William the so. And I do respect that they tried at least. And I give them a, and I, I actually liked that they tried to make it adapt it and then not just control copy because that would just felt lazy for me. Yes, it might sound weird for me to say that considering what, uh, what I just said about the about what I didn't like, but I, uh, I would considering that there is a live action Japanese uh, Death Note movie, it would just feel eh, I've seen this before, but do you get what I mean? I'm, I'm, uh, I resp uh, I, I find it positive that I dare to try and uh, try and you get what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Stories, stories are completely subjective, and they're always for a different audience. And that's that's where the transition comes into effect. Because I mean, this story is completely profound in the Japanese culture but honestly like being able to move the story to the US like it opens it for a wider audience and it's like everyday comic books like you have to transition the story to a new time period a new culture like it, it opens it up for a wider audience and it allows the story to not just be for one culture, but to be for every culture, e even if there are, are variations, like it, it, it still allows every culture to relate to it. Yeah, I thought I'm totally behind that. I'm just, yeah. I am glad that it, uh, they adapted it, but I, even though I didn't like how they adapted it, so it, it might sound a bit weird. I don't know. So for me personally, um, yes, I I like that they tried to adapt it for Jap or for the uh, American culture, um, because I d I do think that the Japanese have a different perspective on the world than we do. Um, they sure have. Japan is that one country in the world that is sort of a mix, a perfect mix of East and West, and a lot of that came from World War II. But because of that, they have they see the world differently. And so the entire concept of Death Note is not something that would even exist in the West. And the fact that they brought it here and made it kind of work is interesting all on its own. Um, things I liked about the movie, though. Um, Willem Dafoe, obviously. Um, the highlight of the movie, because he's inviting and soothing and creepy all at the same time uh lakeith samfield who his performance as l is one of his best performances ever uh he's very very eccentric and like you don't really want to double cross the guy i part of me would love to see lakeith samfield do a version of sherlock Holmes. i think that would be really cool after i've seen his l um and then um, I also liked Margaret Qualley. She's really good in the movie. Um, at first, I didn't like her character. And then I watched the movie a second and third time, and I got her character. It clicked. Um, it's really kind of cool that she develops into the villain of the movie. Um, and so, yeah, that's cool. Um, then... The other big thing is um, I love the music. So Wingard did this Guardians of the Galaxy-esque thing where he uses a bunch of pop songs interwoven into the movie to give it life and boldness. And a lot of people thought it was too campy. I thought it was perfect. It was perfect. Um, especially the end with the Air Supply song. I, the ending of that Netflix Death Note movie is one of my favorite movie endings in recent years. And I know many people will disagree with that. And that's okay. I understand. I personally love it. 
and I've been stuck on it for a long time. So yeah, I really liked that ending. I've I've really come to terms with it, and it is one of my favorite movie endings in recent years. Awesome, I totally agree. N no comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Look, I believe movies are fully subjective, and so me too. I'm just uh, I, I just don't want to uh, be forced to add in a uh, sensor uh, noise for about f uh, five to ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know. It's one of those things where it's because it had the history of the manga and the anime. Like, I understand the passionate opinions people have on it. I really do. Um, I, I would feel the same way if this was a missed movie set in, I don't know, Europe. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I would feel the same way about that. And I don't know why I used Europe. Let's use Japan. A missed movie set in Japan. Okay, I'd feel the same way about that at first. Like, why in the world did you do this? Or a Star Wars movie set on the moon. So a Transformers movie, basically. Wait. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Um, I guess that's a pretty good segue into things we would like to see in the sequel. Uh, because, you know, the first film pretty much only covered the first half of the anime and manga. Um, for those who haven't seen the movie, spoilers. Uh, that ending ends with um, uh, Character of Light. He is in a hospital bed, just survived his own death by coming back and then L finds a piece of the death note and he's just fixing to write light's name and then stops himself. And then, uh, Ryuk turns around the corner and says, you humans are so interesting. And the movie ends. So it kind of stops in a place where the sequel could go anywhere. It, it could cover the rest of the manga or anime, or it could carve its own path. So I'm going to go ahead and take lead on this. Sorry, Isaac. Um, I'd really like to see it go off on its own path. I mean, yeah, basing off of the manga or the anime is great. But honestly, like, to see it go on its own path, like, that's what I really want. Like, we, we see a female pick up the death note and she has to deal with her own um, angel of death. I can't remember what those things are called for the life of me um shingami shingami thank you and then we see william devoe's character like mentor the sh shingami for that death note that the female character picked up or vice versa something of the sorts um just it seeing it grow beyond the anime because the anime is japanese culture and so since we've we've adapted the storyline for American culture. Let's see it go beyond the anime and let's see it grow into its own field. Isaac, what do you think? I mean, even though I hate the movie, I, I'm not uh, against the sequel because a sequel can sometimes uh, be better than an original and I think it's starting to the sequel to this can. You just look at the... Uh, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what's the horror, uh, name of the horror movie about the board board game? Uh, uh, Jumanji. No, no, no. Inter uh, 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 oh, the one, Ouya. Ouya. Oh, Ouya yeah. 2 is Ouija. so much better than the first one, for example. They took the concept and they... they, they, they a much better job. It's like night and day, so to speak. And even though I, I, uh, how should I put it? I'm with the Katie that I think they should make their own, uh, sort of 
grow beyond, but I still, uh, but I have to say that I, just keep the identity of Death Note and I'm fine, so to speak. And I think, how should I put it? Not there, I'm not it rambling. Yeah. Just keep the identity, feel free to make your own story and get, uh, have a, you know, have a female as the next lead. Have a, yeah, you get what I mean. I mean, I just want to feel is feel that identity, if you know what I mean. I want to feel. Uh, I want to have uh, the feeling that I missed. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you guys are saying. Um, I mean, Isaac, it feels like you want it to feel more like Death Note, but take on its own identity. Katie, it feels like you want it to go off and do its own thing. Yep. I'm kind of smack dab in the middle between you guys. So I want to see the sequel pick up that story from the end and if not give resolution, at least set it up so that it can be an anthology series. Because um, I, I was reading someone on Twitter who was like, this series would be perfect for like Netflix's version of Final Destination, where every movie sort of turns into no! this cat and mouse game of somebody gets the death note and then somebody is uh, doing something with it. So obviously with Light, you have Light trying to play good cop, bad cop, trying to, you know, kill people as a superhero. But what would someone else do with the death note? Like, would they try and get revenge? Or what would they do? Would they try and hide it from the world because they think that it's dangerous? I mean, you could honest, like, you could see them taking on their own path, like, not necessarily in revenge, but, like, doing good with it or, like, killing the bad guys. But you could also see Light come in and stop it, dead gummit. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, my neighbor came home. Um... So you could see Light mentor the new person that has the Death Note and try and get them onto his path that he took in the first movie. And then deciding whether or not to go in the direction that Light went or in their own direction. I think it could be an interesting concept. Like you could bring back the original characters and you could see their influence, but it's ultimately a new character that's in charge of the Death Note. I think it sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of a semi-spoiler uh, uh, for you that uh, because uh, there is uh, one part in a sort of sequel that uh, people uh, theorize that uh, the new Shimigami is light, so to speak. I'm not gonna mention everything uh, wh why that is, and so, and I wonder. If they could use that fan theory into something that like becomes a Shimigami, so to speak, and then so like it. if Light died and came back in the Willem Dafoe role, that would be cool. Yeah, um, that could be something that could twi make another twist on, uh, the but uh, at the same time be truth uh, to the identity. I mean, have a Shimigami teaching, uh, teaching around, but that, uh, the Shimigami is a former Death Note owner, so to speak. You get what I'm saying? Also adds a little bit of stakes to it, because, you know, with Ryuk, it, it's kind of implied that he's invincible, but what happens if you have someone who's not invincible in the role? Changes things a little bit. Well, uh, as far as I know, the Shimigami is, is sort of invincible in the end, considering their role in the world. True. Um, all these concepts are really unique, though, and you know, in order to bring any of them to life, you've got to have the right directing brains behind it. Um, are there any? people you guys would like to see direct the sequel? 
Scott Derrickson, the Doctor Strange guy. I think uh, he is. Uh, I think uh, they did the right choice to add on a sort of a horror. Uh, uh, director with uh, Ada Adam, even though I'm not so much fan of all these other films, but I think Scott Erickson has uh, especially shown with uh, Doctor Strange that he, ha he knows how to handle horror, he knows how to handle comedy quite well, and uh, he knows uh, sort of uh, and that sort of camp, uh, camp nature that uh, Strange has. Uh, I think he could be a uh, he could he use horror. He could use comedy. He could use uh, he could use those to an advantage that uh, that I uh, yeah. I think you know what I mean. Sorry, I'm just losing my words right now. Scott Derrickson for Death Note Two would be pretty cool. Katie, how about you? So this is a long shot, I know, but. Honestly, like, Death Note is so much of a head trip. Like, I could see Christopher Nolan taking the wheels and giving us a wild ride. That could be quite funny, actually. And fitting at the same time. Okay, if, if Nolan did Death Note, I would want a reboot, and I would want Tom Hardy to play Ryuk. <laughs> I agree on that one. I uh, certainly agreed uh, there. That would be epic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, like I said, watch up, but I, I think it would be an interesting take. I have my sights set in a completely different direction. So I want to see Joseph Kahn direct Death Note 2. And a lot of people are thinking, wait, who, who's that? Uh, Joseph Kahn directs a ton of music videos for a ton of different musicians. Um, he works with Taylor Swift a lot. He's worked with uh, Jennifer Lopez, Lady Gaga, um, Beyonce, I believe. He's worked with a ton of different people um, on a ton of different music videos. And he's also directed his own films. And if you've ever seen one of his music videos or films, they are done in a very specific style that would complement what Adam Wingard did and also allow him to take those characters beyond. Um, so regardless of whatever the, the script is, whatever that script winds up being, um, he is the kind of person with the right vision for it who I think could elevate it. Stunned to silence. <laughs> I enjoy Taylor's videos, so... Uh, can you name uh, the movies he has made? Uh, let me go ahead and pull those up because I'm going to rattle them off wrong. Um, he directed uh, the movie Detention, which was like a low-budget movie. Um, he also directed the movie Torque, starring Ice Cube. But the biggest thing that he did was he directed the movie Bodied, which was a uh, black comedy film about rappers produced by Eminem. And it was apparently a really big deal. Um, YouTube actually purchased the movie and started streaming it on their website. Um, it got pretty good critical acclaim. Uh, so, I mean, the guy has chops to do something like Death Note, for sure. I don't think I've seen any of those movies, so I couldn't back up his movie claims. But like I said, I enjoy the music videos, so. I'm oh, yeah. not, the big, uh, not the big guy in music videos, so no comments there. I should actually, you know... For sake of transparency, uh, his first movie, Torque, was considered a, a fail. Like, it, it got negative reviews. But at the same time, it also had... Um, it also had a pretty, you know, well-known cast who, you know... It, it at least gave the movie clout, and it was a release by Warner Brothers and everything, so it was not meant to be a fail. It just turned out to be. 
and that happens, you know. Um, some of James Gunn's earlier films were not good. And, you know, we know what happened with Guardians of the Galaxy. So I think sometimes you just have to give someone the right material. For Joseph Kahn, that's been music videos because, you know, some of the best music videos that have come out in recent years were directed by him. Just as an example. Hmm. If you say so, say so. Yep. Anything else on the shopping block? Really, the biggest thing uh, is, you know, I would like to give a message to the divided fan because obviously we've talked about the pros and the cons of a sequel to Netflix's Death Note, but you know, at the end of the day, fans are still going to be divided. And it's a divided time for fandoms, especially with Star Wars fans being split down the middle on The Last Jedi and Star Trek fans being split about all the things they're doing in that series. And you go on to something like Death Note, it's a smaller fandom, um, more tight-knit, more um, of a singular mind about certain things. And so, of course, the the reaction to the film was stronger. So, you know, do you guys have anything that you'd like to say to the fandom? Like, you know, and, you know, how they think, how you think they should react in the future? Um, to me, fandom is always, it's always subjective. And you just have to keep that in mind. Like, you can't, you can't take offense to something that is meant for a different audience. Like, you have to accept that sometimes not everything in the fandom is going to be directed at your specific brand of fan. Like you, you can't expect that. And so ultimately if you can take the high road and just say, you know what, I, I, I I'll get it next time. Um, it's going to end up better in the long run for everyone in the fandom. And so I just hope people can realize that for anything, Death Note, anime, Star Wars, DC, anything like if people can realize that the geek kingdom in its entirety would be a lot happier i think you hit the nail on the head with that one katie i i just feel like it's okay if you don't like it uh, something it's okay if you like it heck i don't like the latest star wars films I don't go out and uh, uh, complain and uh, everything like that uh, because I don't like them and yada, yada, yada. You get my point. Just you, you, you talk about it. Discuss about it. Just don't uh, be an about it. Yeah, I definitely think that um, fandom would benefit from understanding that film, TV, movies... Ev- Everything is subjective. Or st- storytelling wise, stories are always subjective. Some people are going to like it, some people are going to identify with it, and others won't. And, you know, with something that's corporate fiction like Death Note, um, you, you just have to recognize that going in. Um, temper your expectations. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't like it. And somebody out there is definitely going to like it. Um, I remember when the new solo movie came out, a lot of people thought they were going to hate it and they took their kids and their kids came out saying it was their favorite star Wars movie. And I can totally see why, because it is, it's a swashbuckler. It's got a younger Han Solo. It's got Chewbacca. If you're a kid and you're seeing that movie for the first time and you don't have the history of star Wars as your reference, that very well could be your favorite new star Wars movie. And it may be their favorite star Wars movie for the rest of their life. That's the great thing about stories. They, there is going to be somebody out there who likes it, and that's okay. You know, sometimes passion into a story is all that matters. Um, you could be Tommy Wiseau making the room, and somebody's going to like it if they can see your passion for that story. And so, you know, I would say to the fandom, give the sequel the chance. Um, who knows what director they'll bring on? Who knows what 
cast members will be coming back, if any. Um, give it a chance. Give it a shot. Because, um, you know, every storyteller out there, I believe their story deserves to be told. And it's at least worth, you know, at least one viewing before you decide for yourself what you think. Try anything once. That's always my motto. Exactly. It ain't asparagus. It's just a movie, okay? <laughs> well, you guys, do you guys have anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up? Um, no, not really. Um, y'all can hit me up on Twitter with any commentary y'all have, especially Star Wars. Star Wars is my thing. Isaac, how about you? You can uh, find me at Emblemaniac talking about uh, the different kind of anime. I'm pretty much the anime uh, anime guy on the, <laughs> on the site, so so uh, I love to talk about that, and I certainly agree with you on the last part. And Katie, uh, where can folks find you on social media? You can find me anywhere on social media at kgillstrap13. I've also got my blogspot going up. So that's kgillstrap13.blogspot.com. Check me out for other reviews other than comic book related. And you can find me on Twitter at the Bellman. That's B E A L L uh, because my ancestors couldn't spell. Um, and of course, you can find me on all Storybook channels Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, and here on YouTube. And Storybakers, thank you again for watching. And I'll see you next time.